Hey, what's up, Canada Goose shoppers? Um, I'm sure you're looking around for different alternatives for Canada Goose. And that's also how I found Novus. Um, there's also a Canadian company, and they also make excellent winter coats. Now, before, before I go on, you notice that I set the tag on. I'll tell you right off the bat that I am actually going to return this jacket for a reason that I'll go over a little bit later on. But a little backstory. Basically, I live on the east coast of the U.S. Uh, it gets cold, but not that cold. However, every time during the harsher, harsher period of winter here, I still need to do a lot of layering. And I find that kind of annoying, because like, as I take off coat, I gotta hold on to them. And also, I plan to do some traveling to maybe Alaska or Canada uh, later this year during winter. So I want something warm, that's substantially warm, that can keep me warm there, so I don't have to go there and try to rent stuff. So that's, that's how I kind of got started in terms of searching for a more heavy duty winter jacket that can take with me and keep me warm while I'm not traveling. <clears throat> now I do not live in some super harsh weather uh, like Alaska or Canada long term. So I want something that is still usable on the east coast of the US without going overboard. So I started my search. Lots of people recommend Canada Goose because they're so well known, the brand is so well marketed, but at the same time, they also have a pretty bad stigmatism to attach to it because of how popular it is with maybe the college crowd or the, you know, the hipster crowd or whatever. Um, <clears throat> that's a nickname for them, Canada Douche. So I was like, okay, I want to see if there's any alternatives. And so I hop onto different forums, get people's recommendations. And this other brand, this brand comes up consistently. Um, they're called Nobis. Nobis, uh, people consider them, them like the Rolls Royce of winter jacket um, in Canada. They have a really well reputation and they're not that well known as Canada Goose yet. So not everybody's wearing this. And in terms of actual practicality, how warm they are, they are on par, if not warmer, than Canada Goose because they use the same material. So I was like, okay, all right, let me check out um, the Nobis line and see what they have for men. So they have this right here. This is the Nobis Cartel. Uh, bomber jacket and they also have a pakar that's a Nobis Yetsi that's a little bit longer down the thigh so seeing how I live on the east coast of the US that is not super cold I figure a long long jacket maybe a little bit um, overkill because they have like a cold index meaning that how cold can you uh, wear this jacket at and this is ranked at three versus a uh, pakar would be like four so a little bit, a little bit bulkier, a little bit longer, you know, a little bit unwieldy. So I figure, okay, bomber jacket would be good. And because I'm short, so I figure a shorter jacket will make me look pro more pro proportional versus if I wear a longer jacket, it will just make me look even shorter, right? <clears throat> so before we move on, I know sizing is always a pain for a lot of different people, especially shopping online. So let's get that over with first. I am five, six and a half. Uh, that translates roughly to maybe 170 cm. And I am about 140 pounds to 145 pounds, depending on when I weigh myself. And in terms of jacket size, this is an extra small, and it fits me perfect. Now, let me stick my leg, stick my sleeve out with the tag hanging. Um, <clears throat> I can pull it out a little bit. So go to here. But of course, with the cuff, you can kind of pull it back in, and it's perfectly fine. And I feel like if you are 5'8 or above, you probably want to step up to a size small for the length. Otherwise, this may be a little bit too short for you. Um, in terms of girth, let me try to set this up real quick. <clears throat> and being that this is a bomber jacket, it is expected this part would be kind of puffy because it's cuffed down here. And I'll just kind of do a little rotation so you can kind of get a sense. So again, I'm about 140, 145 pounds, five, six and a half. And I am wearing an extra small, and it fits beautifully. I couldn't ask for a better fit. So I hope this helped you if you are kind of concerned about fitness. So extra small, five, six and a half, 140 pounds. All right. So let's talk about some cool features of this uh, bomber jacket. Uh, before we go on, actually, uh, let's talk price first. So the price, uh, I think the normal price is about $650, which is on par as the Canada Goose brand. Um, a lot of people say, dang, that is a lot of money to pay for a winter jacket. That is true. However, if the jacket is good quality and actually keeps you warm, I think it's worth the money. Especially this, um, it's not, it's made in Canada, it's not made in China, so labor-wise, it's already kind of high. In terms of material, 
I mean, it's great. I have nothing to complain except for some stuff I'm going to talk about, which leads me to wanting to return this jacket, and I'll get to it. But in terms of actual workmanship, I have the, the black crosshatch. Looks fantastic. It looks really classy. It is not this. It may appear a little bit shiny in the video due to the lighting, but in person, it's really matte. It's not. It's not like shiny. It does not make the you know the plasticky trash bag sound like. Oh, like it does not have that. Quality is really high. I having spent that much that much money on the jacket. I go over it really carefully, and I think yes, this is worth the money. This is what you want. So in terms of feature, <clears throat> let's let's start from the cuff. So the cuff, they have the thumb hole, which I really like actually. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I love this. It's like, if it's too cold, you can have your gloves on, you can just like slip your hand through it, right? I have running jacket, uh, running jacket that has the thumb holes too, and I, I love those. Now, of course, only issue to that, if your hand is in the thumb hole and you're doing stuff, you may cause pillow here, you know, it's gonna get rough. But I like this feature personally. Um, another thing that stood out to me is magnetic closure. So we have zip here. Uh, the zip is really, really smooth, by the way. There's no issue. And we have magnets embedded inside this jacket, and it'll just snap in place. See? And I think that's brilliant. I mean, when it's cold out, you don't want to deal with buttons, right? You just zip it up, boom, snap to kind of keep the keep the zipper um, away from the elements. And these are all these all have like water repellent treatments, so. I wouldn't say it's waterproof, but then water just beads off, at least in the beginning, before the treatment wears off. Now at the top and bottom, we do have a button to button up, to make sure it does not fly open and stuff like that. And while we're doing buttoning and buttoning up, why don't I put the hood on? And on top of the hood, there's an adjuster to determine how, how far the hood hangs beyond your head. And inside this fur, there's actually a wire that goes all the way around, so you can shape, you can shape your jacket, and also you can. There's a velcro closure, which is the bane of my existence. I'll explain in a little bit, to kind of keep it close. So right here, yeah, I'm kind of feeling. I'm feeling pretty hot right now, actually. I, although <clears throat> I look kind of ridiculous right now, but I'm sure in um, a super harsh environment, I will appreciate this. I look like ET, right? ET phone home. <laughs> All right, so let's open this back up. Adjust this, there's a embedded wire again. I mean, it's actually pretty thick, so it's, it's not flimsy. I'm just open this back up. Woo, warm. Uh, similar to the Pacars, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but basically the long jackets, they have um, hand warmers right here, and these are line, fleece line, so it's really warm. It may be kind of strange, it's kind of this high up, but then if it fits, it's almost like a slang. So this makes sense to me. It feels great. Um, right here, button with um, one-sided padded fleece. So like this side is fleece, this side is not. But these are, this is button closure. Opening up, we have internal pockets. Great for storing things. Also, uh, actually these are not padded. But great for storage. We have more pockets down here. This is just like a little elastic pocket to put things. Nothing on the, oh, actually there's an elastic pocket on here on the right side too, but no super closure on this side. <clears throat> so again, the jacket is really warm. The quality of the stitching is excellent. I love the material except for one thing, uh, which, oh, actually before that, <laughs> I keep like pushing it back right cliffhanger. So this strip of fur, it's actually coyote fur, and I know a lot of people have issue with using real fur. Now, they claim that they have been getting this fur in a humane, humane way, possible, as humane as possible, and I mean, come on, we have geese feather in here, we keep like, I have a dog here, I have a parrot in a cage, I have fish in my aquarium. I feel like as long as they do this humanely, right, um, with my environment in mind, I'm okay with it, as long as they don't go crazy. I've seen some really crazy video. Mainly from my country, China, um, where they, they skin the animal alive. That's just, uh, that's insane. But let's not get into that. Uh, they claim that these are humanely acquired, so hopefully that is true. But this strip actually comes off. So this, strip can, this whole strip can come off and it becomes a really cool, it's like a really cool window jacket without a fur. And it still looks really great. Uh, I feel like if I were to keep this jacket, uh, or the next jacket I get, probably the Yeti, I'll probably just take the fur out 
uh, just walk around the city for most days. But the way I want to kind of spice it up a little bit, I reattach it for her and walk around like a little douche. <laughs> but it looks cool. I'm just kidding. It looks cool. All right. So to the things that I, that's kind of like a deal breaker for me. It's actually two things. Uh, the first one, the first one is really is really oversight. So as I shown before, up here, this is Velcro, right? So this is the female side, this is the male side. I use the male side because this is the grippy side where it kind of latches onto the, basically these are these are little hook and this is like the, you know, so this side hooked onto this side. I'll call this a male side. So when not in use, it's just kind of hanging out here. So whenever I kind of try to do this, like adjust it a little bit, the cuff would get caught in the Velcro and pill. Let me see if I can show you, show you guys this. See how it's peeling already? It's ridiculous. The first time I put it up, I was like, ah, oh, it's caught. I'm like, put my oh, shit. Now I do have a peeler where I can just cut these off or I can just use a razor to kind of trim it off and that should be fine. But I feel like for a jacket that's more than $600, issue like this should not exist. There are a couple ways to solve this really quickly. Um, I've seen, um, I have a photog photography bag that has a Velcro and in order to not use the Velcro or silence the Velcro, they have another layer with an extra female side, you can just flap onto this. But essentially, it will cover the male side when not in use. This will completely solve this problem. <clears throat> now, I'm having this issue even when I'm not using a thumb hoop. When I have the thumb, thumb loop in, every single time I reach my hand up here to like, maybe like touch my hair, wash my face or whatever, you know, squeeze a pimple, whatever, <laughs> uh, this will get caught. And then it will pull out even more fur. Now on the Amazon on the Amazon page, there's somebody mentioning that they're disappointed with the jacket because the cuffs is peeling already, and I think this is probably why it's getting caught on the male end of this Velcro. So I really, really, really hope that Anubis can fix this issue. Um, I do think this is a user experience issue, and again, as I mentioned, the fix should be really easy. Just extra flap that you can like stick to this while while the Velcro is not in use, and when people want to use it, really quickly slide it back and then you know, stick to the other end, right? So this really left a bad taste in my mouth. I'm like, okay, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna worry about using my jacket just because of this, this is silly. So that's, that's basically my number one biggest complaint. And I guess when I spend money on something, I want, uh, based on the value, right? Based on, based on value, you're telling me that it's a $600 jacket, but then I have to deal with something, something like this. This is ridiculous. Um, so chances are I'm gonna return this. However, I do like the Yassi because I do not have this and it is a little bit longer, which leads me to my second point. So after seeing the jacket and this, right, it gave me a sense that this jacket is actually pretty delicate. And I was testing out the, um, the cuffs to see how waterproof it is. It is kind of water repellent because it beads off, it does get wet. So it does retain moisture, at least in my test. I'm just kind of spray some water on it. Now, remember initially I mentioned why I want to get this jacket is because I want to go out to Alaska. I want to, I really want to try dog sledding. If you guys know a good company, let me know. And I want to be able to wear my own jackets. You know, just, I want to like wear other people's stuff. So essentially I want a jacket that is also good for outdoor. Now looking at this, this jacket looked great, but just looking at the construction and the material choice and the design design choices they made, I realized that this is pretty much a strictly urban jacket. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it, but for me, I'm more interested in a jacket that I can wear for outdoor adventure as well. I know it's asking for a lot, but <clears throat> let's say here is urban wears and here's outdoor adventure. Um, I want a jacket that can fit somewhere, maybe around here. Uh, because when it's so cold outside and it's urban, I need to wear a jacket like this. I don't. I mean, I care how I look, but not that much. I want rather keep keep cold, uh, keep warm, keep warm, not keep cold. So I want a jacket that leans a little bit more towards uh, outdoor adventure, something that's a little bit more, more rugged. Being a bomber, um, maybe I made the wrong choice because bomber typically you do not associate it with uh, outdoor adventures. So that's the second reason, which is at no fault at notice that I'm thinking about exchanging this jacket for the Yatsi, which seems to be more rugged it builds. It's a little bit longer, it does not have all these cuffs that could retain water. And then the cuffs is actually hidden under a sleeve. And, oh well, I mean, it doesn't matter because there's, I, at least I did not see any Velcro uh, for the hood. But 
if this Nobis cartel bomber jacket is any indication of Nobis uh, quality of work, which it is based on the reviews, I think that the Yassi that I'm going to get is going to be just as fantastic as this and it'll probably fit my needs a lot better. And essentially that is my review for the um, Nobis cartel jacket. To sum it up, not being biased, not being, uh, not being, uh, not taking points off for me purchasing the wrong jacket for what I want it to be. I think it is a fantastic jacket. It is worth the six hundred dollars. With one cadaver, is that your Velcro for your hood is gonna destroy your cuff. Now uh, there are some quick fakes yourself to kind of get around it. Maybe you can just like go out buy a little strip of the female Velcro and just cover it. When uh, because how often are you gonna use this? Honestly. Chances are gonna lay like the you're gonna leave it like this, you know, walk around your city block looking cool because you're not wearing a kind of goose, but you still have this like fur strip. Anyways, so those are some quick fix. You can just probably do like a female velcro, cover this up. So it does not catches your cuffs. And with that I think it's okay. But honestly, for me personally, I am kind of upset that a jacket that's worth that much does not have this <clears throat> this kind of like user experience design in mind. Because if they test wear this jacket, they mess around a little bit. I'm sure they have a cuff caught in their Velcro before. So I don't know what's going on. But besides that, if you can live with that, and if you can live with the possibility that maybe you can kind of avoid it every single time, or you can cover this little uh, male, male side of the Velcro up, then this is a great jacket. It looks great. Um, I'll do a little walk around and realize I haven't done that yet. I like how subtle it is. It looks, it looks expensive. <laughs> It does not have that negative connotation with it yet. Maybe it will down the road when people realize that Canada Goose is not the only great Canada jacket making company out there. I really like it. It's just a shame that this bothers me and it's also a shame that when purchasing a jacket, like I did not really consider how I will be using it completely before I can purchase. So this has been, um, actually, how long is this? Wow, it's a really long review. I'm sorry for being uh, rambling so much, but I see that on YouTube there's not much review at all for Novus jackets, um, especially for the cartel. So I hope this review has been really helpful for you guys. And um, if you have any questions, leave me a comment. I'm, not, I'm sure that if I cannot answer it, other Novus owner may chime in. Uh, otherwise, have a great day and stay warm out there.